the fault mods are an important issue, particularly from a safety standpoint. Now, the electronic throttle control must have valid input and output data to operate properly. The system will go into failure mode or fault modes depending on the data failure, but it must not allow unsafe operation. Now, from the electronic throttle control standpoint, unsafe operation occurs any time the computers or computer, depending on which system you have, does not know the driver's intent. If the accelerator pedal position data is invalid, it does not know the driver's intent. It has to change modes. If it does not agree between the driver's intended setting and the actual engine operation, it is an unsafe operation. If idle speed, if speed differs greatly from what is requested by the PCM, it is unsafe operation. Let's take a look and break these down. Now, based upon the overall failure, the control may allow full engine power, reduced engine power, or shut the down, engine down completely if it deems it unsafe. This is Throttle Authority Limiting is the name of this program. Breaking these modes down individually. The full power mode or the normal mode is selected at power up by the controller and remains in effect as long as no faults are present. The accelerator pedal provides full control over engine power and performance. Limited performance, however, is a different mode. Limited performance mode becomes active when a fault is set indicating a problem between the driver intent and actual engine power. Now, limited performance mode is set when a loss between the sensors redundancy is detected. We have redundant sensors on the throttle position as the throttle motor moves the throttle. We have redundant sensors at the accelerator pedal position. When one set of those don't agree, we're in this mode. In the limit perform limited performance mode, the engine power of all pedal positions is lower. doesn't do as much. Maximum engine power is limited. You will never get full power. Engine response to increases in throttle position is slow, very slow. And any time you press the brake, it returns the engine back to idle. The warning lamp on the dash may be illuminated. Now, this is very important you understand this because this is an area where the customer complaints may direct you to what's happening. So remember, engine power is lower in all pedal positions. Engine response is slowed. Applying the brake immediately returns the engine to idle and the warm-up warm -up lamp may be illuminated. Now, if you turn the ignition off and turn it back on and the problem is gone, this goes away and the customer thinks it's in a minute. But you know the area to go look at now. Look at your components. See which one of these redundant sensors is not reading the correct value. Forced idle mode becomes active when there's a total failure of the accelerator pedal sensors. Let's define that. It has no idea what they are. Both pedal position sensors are out of range. Commonly happens when you lose power or ground that's common to both sensors. But when you're in this mode, with no driver intent is available, the engine will start and run, but will not respond to the accelerator pedal. That doesn't make any sense. The key thing here, no response to the accelerator pedal. Look for this as a particular failure mode for the accelerator pedal. In some of the older systems, you may also have a communications failure where we cannot communicate between the PCM and the e external module for accelerator pedal control, accelerator actuator control. Now, the engine shutdown mode will set when the ETC is unable to correctly process the control algorithms and cannot control engine speed. When it says, I want a certain engine speed and it cannot achieve it, it will shut the engine down. It is unsafe to operate if the, from the standpoint of legally, they do not want to operate an engine where the computer cannot control engine power. 
uh, remember, this is some of the lawsuits we talked early on about. They're very concerned with this. So pay attention to these different systems. This mode becomes active when the processor loses the redundancy. Both fuel and spark are disabled. So pay attention to this. If you happen to have this mode and you get a car where there's no fuel and no spark, make sure you don't have an ETC code shutting the whole thing down. Hey, the other thing, diagnostically, go look at your sensors and figure what's going on. It is not as bad as you think. Check for any diagnostic trouble codes and eliminate those up front. An ETC code or one of these can place the system into a fault mode. Now, these will not place it in a, a total shutdown. These things will place it in limited, where it can't side things. They're very rare. What you're going to be, it's depending on mass airflow and the coolant temperature, inlet air temperature, and, and crankshaft position sensor and cramshaft position speed for engine speed. It has to know engine speed. It has to know engine load. It has to have a functioning brake input switch. Use vehicle-specific wiring diagrams to work on these. We keep cautioning that because people try to work on too little information. But remember, first and foremost, it's not the space shuttle. This is basic stuff. It's a Chevy. It's the same type of sensors we have been working with for years. It's a variation of the idle speed control motor. If you want to give it a new name, it works slightly different, but it does the same function. The throttle control motor is not a lot different. Some of them have different drive systems, but so do idle control motors. It's throttle position sensors. We've had TPS sensors before. We have accelerator pedal positions, which functions like a TPS. So don't overcomplicate it, but pay attention to these failure modes and your customer complaints because they may tell you exactly where to go and what to look for.